Okay. Hi, I'm Maryman Castles. I'm with the Keep Gastonia Beetopia Bee City Committee. And I am here to read this book, The Bee Man by Laurie Krebs and illustrated by Valerie Assis. And I'm here with Polly Nader from Keep Gastonia Beautiful. And so let's read The Bee Man. It begins with a little poem about bees. Bees, there wouldn't be sunflowers, wouldn't be peas, wouldn't be apples on apple trees if it weren't for fuzzy old, buzzy old bees dusting pollen from their knees by Eileen Fisher. And now let's read The Bee Man. Here is my grandpa who's known in our town as Bee Man. Here is his jacket with a zipped up hood that covers his face just the way that it should when he visits his hives as the bee man. Here are his gloves made of cotton and leather protecting his hands in all kinds of weather when he tends to his hives as the bee man. Here are the beehives where all the bees sleep tucked all into a box called a shallow or deep and then placed on a stand by the bee man. See all of his tools there? He brought all of his tools. Here is the smoker that calms down the bees and the hive tool that opens the beehive with ease for a much closer look by the bee man. Here is the queen bee who does her job well and lays tiny eggs in a six-sided cell. She's the heart of the hive, says the bee man. Here are the drone bees with big bulging eyes and a large appetite supporting their size. They mate with the queen, adds the bee man. Here are the workers, 10,000 or more, who gather the nectar to bring back in store and the honeycomb cells for the bee man. I see the kitty on this page, but I don't see the bunnies. Let's see if the bunnies come back. There's one. Here are the house bees with swift moving wings that dry up the nectar a worker bee brings, making honey for me and the bee man. Here is the extractor. It's clickety-clack, removing the honey from frames on its rack and filling up jars for the bee man. And here's some of the honey returned to the hives. It's food for the bees to help them survive the long winter days near the bee man. Here are the bees protected from harm inside of the hive, huddled snug and warm. So they'll be here next year, says the bee man. Look, the bunny and the kitty are playing together now. Here's the wagon filled up to the brim with the bottles of honey collected by him and brought to the house by the bee man. And here are the muffins, all warm and delicious and dripping with honey on Grandma's best dishes. I'd like to have one of those muffins. I'm glad that my grandpa's the bee man. Bees. Bees belong to the insect family. They have six legs, three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen two pairs of wings, two antennae, and two compound eyes that let them see in all directions. A bee begins as an egg placed in a tiny cell by the queen. The egg hatches into a worm-like creature called a larva. The larva changes to a pupa, and hidden inside the tiny cell, the pupa turns into a bee. When it hatches, the bee is fully grown and ready to be a member of the colony. It takes about three weeks to go from egg to being a bee. Bee Colonies Bees live in large groups called colonies. A colony of bees has one queen, several hundred drones, and tens of thousands of workers. Drone bees are male bees. They have huge black eyes and plump bodies. 
They don't work inside the hive or collect nectar and pollen. They mate with the queen. The queen bee has a slender body and is longer than all the other bees. She is also the mother of them all. Her job is to lay eggs. In spring's busy season, she lays between one and 2,000 eggs every day. Worker bees are female and they have many different jobs. Sometimes they feed the larvae and tidy up the hive, or they create wax and use it to make new cells. Sometimes they groom the queen and give her a rich protein food called royal jelly. Or they protect the hive from enemies by standing guard at the entrance. Sometimes they leave the hive to gather nectar, pollen, or water. Their jobs depend on what the colony needs for them to do. Beekeeping. Diseases and pests have killed most of the wild bees, so today beekeepers take care of the colonies. They provide weatherproof boxes where bees live. They act as insect doctors and supply medicine to keep the colony healthy. They check the queen to see that she is strong and that new bees are developing. Just before autumn, the beekeepers harvest the hive's extra honey, making sure they put back enough honey for the bees to use all winter. Beekeepers have special clothing that helps them to do their job safely. They wear long gloves, coveralls, boots, and a hood with a protective veil to keep away the curious bees. Hives. A beekeeper's hives are the boxes where the colony lives raises its young, and stores its honey and pollen. Large wooden boxes called deeps are placed on the bottom. Stacked on top of the deeps are shallows, smaller boxes that hold the honey. As they are filled, more shallows are added by the beekeeper and the tower grows taller. Frames and honeycomb cells. Frames are man-made wooden rectangles that support the honeycomb. They are lined up in the shallows and deeps like folders in a filing cabinet. The honeycomb is the cluster of wax cells built onto the frames by the bees to hold eggs, larvae, pupae, honey, or pollen. Smokers. Beekeepers use a metal container called a smoker in which they build a smoky fire. When beekeepers inspect the hive, they puff the smoke to calm the bees. Hive tool. A hive tool is used to help the beekeeper pry open the hive to examine it. Extractor. When it's time to harvest the honey, beekeepers remove the frames from the shallows. With a hot knife, they cut away the wax cappings from the cells and place the frames inside of a large bin called an extractor. It spins the frames and honey splashes against the walls, collecting at the bottom of the bin. Beekeepers open the extractor's spigot and fill their jars with the tasty liquid. About honey. Honey tastes delicious. People have enjoyed it for thousands of years. At first it was gathered from the nests of wild bees. Later people made hives of clay or straw and kept the bees and the honey they made near their homes. Honey begins as nectar a sweet, watery juice inside a flower blossom. A worker bee unrolls her long tongue called a proboscis and sucks up the liquid just as though she were using a straw. Back in the hive, other workers put the nectar into cells and fan it to drive out the moisture. After many trips to the flowers and lots of fanning, the nectar juice thickens into honey. When the honey is ripe, the bees cap the cell with wax to keep it fresh. Pollination. Bees are important insects. Without them, we wouldn't have many delicious fruits, nuts, and vegetables. As bees travel to find nectar, they brush past the parts of the flower that hold the powder-like grains called pollen. The pollen clings to their hairy bodies. When they move on to visit the next blossom, some of this pollen is left on the seed making part of that flower. Because of this, in time, fruits, nuts, and vegetables will grow. Bees help by carrying the pollen from one flower to another, allowing the process of pollination to occur. Bee dancing. Did you know that bees dance? Well, they do. 
and their dance tells the other workers where the nectar is found and how to get there. If food is close by, they do a round dance, running in circles, first one way and then the other, allowing the workers to smell and taste what they have found. The faster they dance, the richer the supply of nectar. If food is further from the hive, they do a wagtail dance. The longer they waggle, the longer the trip will be. Making half a circle in one direction, they turn sharply and waggle in a straight line until they again turn sharply and make a half circle in the opposite direction. The orientation of the dancer inside of the hive tells the workers which direction they should fly. The end. Thank you for joining us and thank you, Pollinator.